اهلا بكم اعزائي المشاهدين في هذه الحلقه من منتدى الشباب. الاسبوع الماضي كنا بنحكي عن المخدرات واثرها في المجتمع وعن كيف ممكن انه نحد من نسب الادمان. تطرقنا لمواضيع كثيره ولكن الوقت ما سمح لنا ان ندخل في كل شيء بدنا اياه. فالدكتور جمال حكى لنا انه نعمل حلقه جديده. ولكن زي ما انتم بتعرفوا دكتور جمال حاليا في تورونتو ف احنا فانا اليوم راح اكون المقدم تاعكم طبعا انا لا اغني عن الدكتور جمال شيئا ولكن ان شاء الله يعني يعجبكم تقديمي انا كمان ويعني تحكوا له انه كنت كويس فاليوم معي كالعاده جمال اهلا هاي واليوم معنا اكي Hello, how is everyone? Uh, Aki, your uh, mic is really low. Juman, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Okay, that's good. So, أولا أعزائي المشاهدين بدي منكم إنكم تدخلوا على هذا اللينك. وتجاوبوا الاستفتاء اللي موجود هناك عشان آه بدي اشوف ردود فعلكم وردودكم على هذا السؤال عشان تساعدونا في الحلقه هاي لانه هاي حلقه عن المخدرات وعن اراء الشعب وجمان كانت كريمه جدا وجهزت لنا آه شغلها وجهزت لنا اشياء تحكي فيها عن المخدرات وعن الدراسات اللي عملوها عن المخدرات فانا بدي اقارن هاي الدراسات مع ارائكم الشخصيه طبعا ما راح يكون في اسماء ما راح يكون في اي شيء ولكن بس هذا استفتاء عادي اوكي جمان ام انا حطلع البرزنتيشن اللي انت عملتيها اوكي تفضلي ايش اللي ايش اللي انت عملتيه اليوم اوكي فاول شيء كان بدي احكي عن ال... عن الجينات وكيف الجينات بتاثر على ال... addiction وهو الإدمان فأول paper عملت لها analyzing هي genes and addiction والauthors ما حاول أحكي اسمهم مشان ما ما أخرب اسمهم بس هي ال DOI number للresearch إذا بدكم تشوفوا ال research تشوفوا ال details انتوا لحالكم هي ال DOI number تبعه you can search it up بيطلع لك على بيطلع لكم على أي research like any universal research place that has actual papers, proper publications, بيكون عنده DOI number. فهي ال DOI number تبعه بس بتحطه وبتلاقي ال paper. فهنبلش أول إشي بال addiction ونشرح شوي إيش هو ال addiction وال إدمان. فا ال إدمان هو هل أترجمه؟ فهو مشاكل like psychological disorders اللي فيها اللي بتاخد مخدرات ومش قادر مش قادر تسيطر على وضع اللي انت بتاخد فيها المخدرات وال انه كيف بتاخد المخدرات وهذا بيكون عنده نتائج destructive بيخرب لك حياتك فهذا هو ال definition تبع addiction ال proper definition مخطوط على السلايد بس هذا اللي بدي اترجمه ففي ثلاثة points كثير مهمين مشان مشان to like to cause addiction that characterize it basically فأول واحد هو craving فبيكون انت مش تي انت كثير بدك المخدرات فهذا بيعمل امبولسيفيتي لإلك فبصير ال بتصير تاخذ مخدرات وانت مش حاسس انه بدك اياه بتروح وبتاخده فهذا اتس امبولسيف والبوزيتيف رينفورسمنت انك بتاخده فهذا بيعطيك um, بيعطيك موتيفيشن وبيخليك يصير بدك تدور على درجز مشان تاخذهم ثاني واحد هو البنجين والانتوكسيكيشن هو عن لما تاخذ الدرجز والوذدرول هو لما يبطل في تاثير للدرجز فهذا بيكون في كومبولسيفيتي ونيجاتيف رينفورسمنت فنيجاتيف رينفورسمنت بدك اياه وما بتاخذه 
فهذا بيسبب لك withdrawals فالdefinition تبع addiction وال والثلاث مواصفات اللي ضرورية لأدكشن وهدول لقيتهم في multiple research they all agree على um, this definition of addiction like it's on the American Psychological Association they all agree with these definitions طيب رمان <تصفيق> يعني هسا الإدمان تعريفه فعليا هو إنه إنه المخدرات تكون مسيطرة على حياة الشخص فقط يعني هل الادمان لازم انه يكون فيه سيطرة على حياة الشخص؟ لازم انه انت ما تقدر يعني لازم انه انت المخدرات هاي تكون مسيطرة على حياتك، مسيطرة على افعالك وما تقدر انت انك تتخلص منها؟ يا yeah, فهذا ادكشن، هلا انت ممكن تاخذ مخدرات وما يكون محسوب انك مدمن لانها مش مسيطرة على حياتك، لازم تكون مسيطرة على حياتك مشان عن جد يكون characterized as addiction فهي كمان ما بتصير بالمخدرات هاي ممكن تصير كمان بال um, uh, ب watching tv shows بالالكترونكس ب حتى doing actions like there is حتى addiction for like exercise addiction وكل هدول في عندهم um, like research وراهم طيب هسه الاغنياء فرضا اللي حياتهم كويسه واللي فرضا البزنس تاعه self sufficient لما هو يتعاطى مخدرات حياته فعليا يعني ما بتتاثر كثير، حياته ما بتوقف عندي ما بتخرب هلا كمان شيء انا هلا بلشت بال بالجينيريكس والادكشن وبعدين كمان عندي كمان ريسيرش بحكي عن عن السوسيو ايكونوميك فاكتورز والغني فيرسز فقير والادكشن فبدك اجاوبه هلا ولا لنوصل للبيبر؟ لا كمل كملي زي ما انت مجهزيتها زي ما انت مجهزيتها كمان اوكي Okay. So هلا نحكي عن ال neural effects وكيف um, كيف هلا ال neurons إيش neurons بالعربي والله ما بعرف ال like ال brain وال neurons إيش هو؟ Good question ما بعرف أنا كمان مش عارفة إنه ال brain المخ وال وال neurons ال ال بتكون مش بوك العصب اوكي مش عارفة صراحة شو اسمها عصب صح اوكي ثانك يو ثانك يو خالتو ام فعصب ام اوكي سو ام سوري اي لوس ماي ترن اوف ثوت اوكي فالاعصاب بالجسم و هاو ذات افكتس ادكشن فالدرجز اللي بيكون عندها فيري هاي ادكتف فاكتورز بيكون اكشولي بتاثر هي على على الاعصاب وعلى على المخ وكيف الهرمونز وال والنيوروترانسميترز وهدول الاشياء بيكونوا بتاثروا من الدرجز وهذا اللي بيسبب ادكشن ففي كثير بيكون لها ام جينيريك فاكتور مع انفايرمنتال فاكتور فهو مش بس انفايرمنتال فاكتور اللي بيحكي لك اذا هتكون اذا ممكن تصير مدمن ولا لا او أو بس شرياتهم هي البيسل جانجليا والبيسل جانجليا اللي بالمخ هي بيسكلي النيوكليس اللي بت اللي بتكون ريسبونسبل لفولنتري موفمنت للموفمنت اللي انت بتختار تعملها هذا اتس كنترولد بالبيسل جانجليا فالادكشن بياثر كثير على البيسل جانجليا هاي كيف بياثر عليها؟ ام um, على حسب في منهم في إنه إذا بتاخذ المخدرات كثير multiple times على حسب الجهات لأنه هلا في بالكروموزومز عندك في alleles وفي specific alleles um, في عندك positions بالكروموزوم وبعدين في عندك specific loci على هذه um, بيكون فيها جينات a specific gene 
فبيكون في واحد سبيسيفيك كود اوف جين بيخليك تقدر ات بيخليك مور سسبتبل لانك تكون مدمن اها <تصفيق> فاذا انت عندك هذا الاليل هذا ات انكريسز ال البروبابيلتي انك تصير مدمن بس كمان بت... على حسب الاليل في اليلز لازم تاخذ كثير لازم تاخذ مخدرات اكثر من مره ريبيتيتفلي تاخذهم كثير انه اكثر من مره مشان اكشولي um, يبلش يصير عنده افكت في منهم اكشولي um, على حسب العمر ما بياثر على الادوليسنس يعني حوالي 13 ل 17 وبياثر اكثر من يونج ادلت ف 17 18 ل 25 إذا بياخذوا مخدرات عندهم هذا الجين يمكن عم بياخذوا مخدراتهم هن صغار ما يأثر عليهم وبس يكبروا يأثر عليهم فعلى حسب السبيسيفيك جين كيف هو بيشتغل بالجسم يعني هسا كل واحد في عنده نسبة من هاي النسب كل كل شخص ممكن يكون هو ممكن إنه يصير مدمن أو ممكن إنه المخدرات تأثر عليه بشكل مختلف عن عن الناس الثانية؟ ممكن بس هلا بدك تعمل مابينج للجينوم مشان تعرف إذا أنت عندك هذا الأليوز المعروفة حتى في كثير أليوز مش معروفة وكثير جينات مش معروفة بنعرف إنه إلها جينيتك كومبوننت بس ما بنعرف الجين سبيسيفيكلي إيش هن في كثير ريسيرش عم بيحاولوا يلاقوا السبيسيفيك جينز لأنه مثلا للويد الجينز غير عن I think smoking لحال في عنده four different it has four uh, two different loci وكل loci فيه um, فيه two alleles فعندك four alleles بالجينز بيأثر على الaddiction للنيكوتين for example mm-hmm. ومن هدول ال four positions I think في ست أنواع جينات بيأثروا على الaddiction كل واحد بيشتغل غير في واحد بيأثر على العمر في واحد بيأثر على ال أم قديش أنت بتاخد سموكينج قديش هو بيخليك أكثر أكثر مدمن وفي منهم آه في منهم بيعطيك آه بيخليك تحتاج الدخل إفكت تبع النيكوتين فور إكزامبل فكل جين بيأثر غير وفي كثير ريسيرش عم بيحاول يلاقي يحاولوا إنه يلاقوها فكيف كيف بيعمل الريسيرش للجينز الانفيرمنت هو اذا بتشوف هون هي الافريج المين تبع الادكشن فعملوا ريسيرش ل نسيت صراحه كم من حدا بس ا فيو هندرد بيبل ام توين بيرز فهو احسن ريسيرش يعملوها بالتوينز مشان يعرفوا يشوفوا الجينات ام للايدنتيكال توينز وين الجينات عندهم نفس الشيء المونوزيجوتيك ودايز ايغوريك توينز هون ديفرنت اليلز و جنرالي 50% ار سيم اليلز 50% ار لا فور موست ادكشن ريسيرش معمول على توينز مونوزيغوريك فيرسز دايزيغوريك مشان يطلعوا هدول الارقام فاذا بتشوف هون الهالوسينوجنز اون افريج بس 0.39 جمال ثاني شوية الصوت عندك وقف اوكي سوري اوكي عبين ما اوكي سامعني اوكي استني شوي أه جربي تحكي اشي اوكي سامعني اه تفضلي كمل اوكي أم فاذا بتشوفوا هون الهالوسينوجنز وهن الدراجز اللي بيخليك تهلوس في عندهم generally on average 0.39% إلو للaddiction للhallucinogen إلو دخل بالجينات بالheritation الhereditary genes و stimulants for example 0.4 cannabis 0.41 وهدول اللينز اللي بتشوفوهم هذا كمان بياخدوا الرينج فهو هذا الأفريج هو بالred box وبعدين في رينج اوكي ام فاذا بتشوفوا هون اكشلي كانبس ام في عنده less addiction rates than smoking وغامبلينج والكهول وحتى كافيين 
right now alcohol and uh, caffeine and smoking is all legal they're more addictive than cannabis mm -hmm. يعني هسا اللي بيشرب قهوة رح يكون يتأثر بالكافيين اللي فيها أكثر من اللي بدخل ماريوانا فرضا؟ الأدكشن للقهوة في كثير ناس ما بتشوفهم بيشربوا قهوة وبعدين um, usually بيشربوا يمكن كاسة أو الناس usually ببلشوا مثلا بلاتيز أو بكاسة قهوة باليوم الصبح وبكفي بعدين بعد فترة بتصير الكاسة ما بتأثر عليهم بصير يحتاجوا كاستين وبعدين بعد فترة بيصيروا ثلاثة وبعدين بضلوا يزيد فهذا اللي دخل بجسمك it's actually getting used to the levels of caffeine وبصير بده أكثر. اها اوكي هلا في another paper كمان بتحكي عن الجينيريك بيسز عن الأديكتيف ديس أوردرز فما حاحكي كثير عن هاي البيبر كانت كثير طويلة بس بس هاي الدي واي نمبر للي بده يشوفها كمان um, فعندهم عملوا كمان اناليسز كثير اكثر مشان يعملوا مشان تبروف انه الادكتيف ديس اوردرز كثير لها دخل بالجينيتيك بيسز وباللوكاي وبالكروموزومز وسبيسيفيك اليلز اللي بتاثر على ادكشن وال um, كيف انت النيورونز تبعك في نيورو ادابتيف تشينجز بتصير فال النيورونز تبعك بتصير تادابت وبتتعود على الدراج وبعدين بتصير تحتاج اكثر وبصير في انكنترولد um, باترن فهذا اللي بياثر على الادكشن انا سمعت uh, انا سمعت من قبل انه في شيء اسمه جين ثيرابي اللي هو انه تقدر انه قبل ما الجنين ينولد تقدر انك تزرع فيه جينات معينة عشان يقدر انه يتخطى هاي الجينات اللي كانت ممكن تسبب له مشاكل. فلهذا الشيء ممكن؟ آه هلا في a lot of Islamic um, Islamic points على هيك اشياء especially انك تغير جينات الفيتس ومن هالحكي انه في عنده كثير um, انه Islamic Islamic perspective against it وانه كيف No, you're basically changing جينات البيبي صراحة. I personally would never do it, بس ما بعرف. ولكن هل هذا هل هذا شيء scientifically ممكن إنه الواحد يعمله؟ آه في ممكن يعمله. It is especially بال early early embryo or early embryo stages. بس كمان لازم نعرف إنه in order to do that, بيكون في في دينجر على ال على الامبريو انه تموت من هالحكي بس كل شيء فيه دينجر ف يا اتس فيري بوسيبل حتى في كثير ناس بيعملوا اي في اف ولما يعملوا الاي في اف كمان um, بيشوفوا الجينيتكس بيعملوا جينوم لايك ا فول جينوم اناليسيس للفيتس قبل ما يحطوها باليوترس اها طب هسه الكبار اللي بيز بدهم يعرفوا مدى تاثير المخدرات عليهم هل ممكن انه يكون في لهم شيء يقدروا يعملوه؟ اه جينيريك ستديز صراحه ما شفت البراكتيكال يوز تبعها ام بريتي شير اذا بتروح على نيوتريشنست وهيك اشياء بيكونوا ممكن يعرفوا اكثر اها بس ما بعرف انه جينيريك ستديز انه يشوفوا لو في سسبتبلتي للادمان يعني ناويين ياخذوا مخدرات مشان يعرفوا اذا حيد منه يعني ولا بس انه انترستد يعني عشان عشان يعرف عشان يعرف مدى خطورته فرضا على المورفين فرضا لانه في ناس بتدمن على المورفين وفي ادويه ممكن تسبب ادمان فهل ممكن الواحد انه يقدر يشوف هاي الاشياء عشان يعرف مدى الادمان تاعه مدى قابليته للادمان؟ theoretically اه بس I would imagine اذا موجود هو in real life حيكون كثير expensive لانه yeah like um, testing genes بعرف انه it's very very expensive فاذا في واحد بده يدفع عليها then go for it okay okay um, هلا هاي graph من ال second paper بيفرجيك هون ال specifically للنيكوتين سموكينج 
في فور لوكاي زي ما قلت فور فور بوزيشنز بال بالكروموزومز وين ممكن um, تدمن واذا بتشوف هون the more um, في six I think six specific alleles that contribute to addiction فاذا انت بس عندك واحد من الالليلز الريت تبعك مشان تدمن is very low إذا عندك two بتعلى وإذا عندك three to four كمان بيعلى ف the more alleles that you have that cause addiction that have um, that have the possibility of being addicted the more alleles you have specifically for nicotine the more the more probable it is to get addicted well, as you can see for adulthood it's actually less for smoking mm-hmm. يعني هسه اللي اهله كانوا مدمنين هل ممكن انه هو يكون مدمن؟ Yes, very highly probable. بالعكس اذا في عندك حدا um, like specifically parents on and direct aunts and uncles or grandparents مدمنين then the risk تبعك لتكون مدمن بيعلى كثير كثير وفي كثير ناس بتشوفها مشان هيك um, بيكون عندهم ام او اب movement على smoking or um, alcohol or whatever um, they don't even taste it لأنه بيخافوا إذا بياخدوا حتى taste ممكن دوريد منه لأنه their chances is higher than a normal person mm-hmm. okay وهدول كمان more research عن ال more research that talks about predisposition to being addicted with alleles with repetitive um, exposure so كل ما انت بتكون اكثر exposed لل لل drugs كل ما بتاخده اكثر كل ما بيكون عندك chance اكثر لتدمن وهذا كمان more research عن نفس الموضوع فاذا اي حدا بيحكي لك انه no that isn't the cause like if all this almost every single scientist agree like if you want to disagree then Go do your research and post it. مشان تقدر تحكي إنه it's not real. Okay. هلا هون هنحكي عن ال poverty. Well, socioeconomic status. فحاولت كتير 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 أدور على research عم بيقارن ال rich with poor people. والإدمان والإدمان levels. Um, إدمان levels. Oh my God. I'm sorry. على English عربي. عم بحاول. Um. بس ما لقيت كثير papers بس لقيت this one paper مع انها شويه it's not that recent كان بدي الاقي شيء معمول بعد 2015 بس I think this paper was around 2010 ف honestly it's very weird like ليش ما عم بيقارن ال socioeconomic status with rich people versus poor people انا عندي I have an opinion on the matter and my opinion is that rich people can hide their addiction Okay, mm-hmm. papers usually when they mm-hmm. test people, they offer people money. So $50, $20, depending on how much you contribute. Um, part of the research. rich people money. Poor people, they're like, okay, that's an extra 20, 50 bucks for answering a few questions. Like, yes, I'm going to do it. did research on addiction, be, um, The people that are, you know, have, they're on the lower scale status. Best of rich people, they're like, I don't need that money. Like, first of all, they don't need that money. Second of all, they don't want to expose themselves. Not in the mapy names or anything. Best they don't want to expose themselves. Mm-hmm. But, but I found this one paper that talks about the social, uh, social socioeconomic status or substance use. مش addiction بس ال probability إن تأخذ drugs in the first place ما عم بحكي عن addiction specifically فهون ال objective كان تبعه هو إنه يشوفوا ال socioeconomic status ف poor people middle class high middle class rich um ويشوفوا ال هن صغار فالأولاد الصغار كانوا poor middle class high middle class وال rich هن صغار Well, if they see the teenagers, does that increase? Does that increase the in probability in whom you in whom you drugs, specifically nicotine, alcohol, or marijuana? Will factors that you saw for how they know the socioeconomic status of the 
subjects كان ال income وال wealth و parental education ف three factors that decided the mm-hmm. status تبعهم ولقوا actually إنه ال kids with low childhood SES ف middle class lower middle class low and then uh, poverty people under the poverty line they had higher chances of smoking nicotine Mm-hmm. So cigarettes, so heck, yeah. But in higher, or specifically mission, mission medium class, and they specified um, in, in high middle class, will rich, will rich, can and home a higher possibility in home to smoke alcohol or marijuana in young adulthood. Young adulthood is around, I think, 14 to 21. So actually, in um, the richer you are, the more likely you are to smoke uh, to smoke marijuana and to drink alcohol. But the lower class, mm-hmm. the more likely you are to smoke nicotine. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there was also side research on employment. So poverty, um, poverty or addiction. It's it's like a correlation, but it's kind of you know this caused this or this caused this. Is it poverty that caused addiction or is it addiction that caused poverty? It's it's a cycle and you can't there's no clear cut line uh with independent factor um to cause the addiction. So um but I'm the research when Samuel employment and they employed people that were addicted. Okay, and jobs and addiction rates. Most people were able to overcome their addiction. They actually stopped smoking and they tested their urine samples before and after. And they were working for a month, of, for nine months, for mm-hmm. nine months. And um, the rates are a lot of But now the problem is that people, they're not hiring addicts, actually. No, hiring addicts will help the addict, like you have an employee, so you hire someone, and you help the addict stop being an addict. But we have a stigma against people that use drugs, so no one's going to hire them in the first place. They become addicted, and then they're just stuck there. They can't get out of it, especially people that are poor. They can't get into rehab, they can't, you know. Well, they, can... they don't have a job, they have nothing else to do. اللي انت حكيتيه هلا انه الناس اللي بتكون مدمنة راح يصير معاها فقر. وبرضه حكيتي انه الناس الفقراء لما الناس الفقراء لما تعطيهم شغل ببطلوا ادمان، هل هذا يعني انه الادمان ممكن هو لا يكون لا. واحد من اسباب الفقر؟ او الفقر واحد من اسباب الادمان؟ both ممكن يكون هيك وممكن يكون هيك ما بتقدر ما في um, like ما بت... في ناس بيكونوا middle class بعدين they get addicted وبعدين their life goes downhill بيصيروا poor بعدين في ناس لأنه مش عم بيلاقوا شغل مش عم they, they are poor بس they can't get out of the state of doing something else with their life they can't get out of that state then they reach a level of helplessness that might lead them to drugs and um كمان ليش في a lot of research على um lower social socioeconomic status like communities who drugs who well you know drugs are more available there like that's that's the hub so it's easier for them to get it not you know and a lot of research has shown that in almost every high school it's so easy to get drugs like everyone gets drugs and that's why more Rich people get drugs than poor people because they have a lot of money and they have money to waste. So they use alcohol and marijuana more. That was Afi, the, uh, what do you think of that? What do I think of what? What do you think? What do you think of it? Are, are poverty and, uh, and addiction related and how would they be related? Can poverty cause addiction? Um... I don't, I don't, the thing is, I don't view it in, in those terms. I view it, like I said in the last one, I view it in lack of purpose. So when mm-hmm. you, poor people 
I guess if you don't have money, then, you know, you don't have the time to be thinking of a purpose. So you're more susceptible into making mistakes and your thinking is is more of a short-term thinking more than a long-term thinking, you know, because you're trained in the way that you are to, if you're living paycheck by paycheck, right? So mm-hmm. you're just thinking on what's like next, you know, like in, in, in the moment. Um, then other things like other fa- okay, if you want to add like factors like, like um like if you live in low low income neighborhoods or you don't you struggle for money or things like that um there's it's more likely that you'll be around um certain factors that are damaging to your life like um like crime this and that you know certain things that could uh cause some sort of trauma or expose you to certain environments at a young age that you shouldn't be exposed to right Mm -hmm. um and then that i guess would start um using and like the other thing is is like understanding the culture too right like the culture is whether you're rich or poor drinking and smoking is it's ad you know like it's Mm -hmm. it's something that you do um uh yeah and like for example like the even even the canadian culture right you have some homes where like you know they drink from a really young age. You know, I know this one Italian person um, drank when they were nine years old, like they would drink wine at the table, right? So like it could start in things like that. So I don't, yeah. I don't know if it's just like the word poverty itself and addiction is, there's, there's a correlation I think is like, there's just specific things in there. You mentioned a lack of purpose. So do you think that also the rich people who do drugs, who spend their money on drugs, do they also lack that purpose? Um, I was going to say 100%, but I don't know. Like, I don't, there's not one thing, like no matter how much research that you do or researchers do or whatever, there's not, you can't just like have this label and just put it on everybody and everything, right? You'll mm-hmm. never come to a solution that way because every person that you meet is unique in their circumstance, and there's not That's just why you one. Have multiple research about all the different factors. It's, it still wouldn't cover everything. Yeah, but, but it's trying. That's why there's more research going on. I know, but no matter how much research that you do, you won't cover everything. Believe me. But what it's, it's helpful, and it's still so helpful. Hmm? What do you think the research would be missing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't really have an answer for that one. Um, like clearly, well, just like what your man said, like this, why is there's only like a few papers that a she lot found of about don't social. Want to, a lot of people don't participate in research. Yeah, and that's the other it's thing. Very hard right? to find people to actually um be like, yeah, like I'm gonna help you. I don't want money. I just want to do this for the sake of helping research and being able to define stuff. Like no one does. Yeah. That. Mm-hmm. So whatever the obstacle is, like clearly there's 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 things that are lacking. There's uh, information that's lacking. But like I said, you know, like if the research is from a point of view, like they're trying to shed an as like a specific a- aspect of the problem. You know what I mean? Like that's cool. You know, over the years, tens, twenty decades. You know what I mean? Like maybe they'll get enough aspects to come and solve the problem. But um, as I see it, for me, like. Um, How do I explain it? Like they, like researchers can go do that. You know what I mean? Where while we'll be working in the field, type of thing. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. so, they do their research based on samples and things like that, and they write down and they, you know, correlate or whatnot. We do all that thing on this, all, all that stuff on the spot in our heads with the people that we meet and the people that we interact with. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Anecdotal so, so cool. evidence, though. The whole point of research is that it generalizes the population. You can't work everything on anecdotal because you might see something in a specific city and find a solution, but that city won't work around in another country, in a different culture. 100%. And that's why the people there will will do the same thing there. Like, that's how it's done. The research is an important value, important aspect of that. So within an organization, Clearly, like the ones that I work with, like they do their research. We do our research. So basing, we do, it's just not following the exact scientific formula 
that you would learn in university, but it's close to it, right? Um, whereas yeah. if I, I do think what would be effective is if the same formulas that we follow at university were to, you know, those same researchers were to shift over into those kinds of organizations that, for example, in this context, helping with addiction, I do think that would have a huge um, overwhelming impact and would actually, uh, you know, we'll actually see some tangible results. Mm -hmm. Helping with what? Uh, helping with the organizations that actually deal with this stuff. But that's what research does, actually. Research, they get most of their information, most of their most of the numbers they use for their statistics from the from those organizations. And the whole reason they publish papers is so that those organizations can see them and see how they can help. If you see any research paper at the end, they always tell you there's always a point of like, okay, further research should do this in order to solve this. Like we found out this and then doing this can help you um, solve it. And then that same researcher might do another project on fixing it, but they can't. We're on everything. the same page. We're on the same page. That's what I said earlier. We're on the same page. All I said is that research doesn't encompass everything. It's not just one slapstick thing. Like it's it, it constantly changes. It constantly shifts with the way the society changes. It sounds. It sounds like Juman is saying that research can be done over big areas and can be repeated over multiple times. And then you compile all that research and, and come up with uh, a conclusion. And what you're saying is that individuals at the local level can be doing their own inferences, can be doing their own research. Mm -hmm. And that would also add to the big body of research that that I, local I society think, has. Well, I think what more of I'm trying to say is, is if the because okay research itself is, is is a talent and a skill you know what i mean so like it's something that's very valuable someone that's able to do that so what i'm thinking so what i'm saying is like i feel like we would come closer um we would make more progress if those and again there are research that do this they do work closely with organizations and things like that but i think that we would come more progressive it, it was more focused rather than, you know what I mean? Which there are, which there are things happening, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I think that's what I'm saying. Like if every organization had their own research specialist, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. whatever that organization's goals are, I feel like they would be able to um, reach them quicker and more efficiently. Okay, I'd like to now move on to the next topic, which would be the treatment phase of the addiction. So now we talked about the causes of addiction and how it would affect the population. So now I'd like to move on to the treatment phase. So Jaman, you can take it over. Uh, about what exactly, sorry? The treatment phase, like continue on with your presentation. Okay. Um, so, as I said, I could not find research to support the uh, the substance use and the social economic status, except that one comparing poor people and rich people. Like, there is, it's very hard to find them. But I mm -hmm. did find um, TurnBridge, and TurnBridge is an addiction treatment program based in Connecticut. Um, and they actually did it using their own, like, their own patients and they saw the socioeconomic levels and they compared it and what they found out that lower income neighborhood um because there's a lack of education and they're more prone to drug exposure and abuse um that's why they're it's mostly research but actually they found out that the mo most of their clients are actually um wealthy teens sorry i wrote greens it's uh, wealthy teens uh, they're actually at higher risk for substance use and mental health issues than so both substance use and mental health issues and lower class children and mm -hmm. this is based and this is from an organization this is um this is their observation about their patients and they found out that by age 26 
upper middle class adults are two to three times more likely to be addicted than the national norm of the U.S. So um, they found out that it can be from academic pressure, um, academic pressure and stress plays a factor to them taking drugs, specifically Adderall and Ritalin and other stimulants. They also have extra money that they don't know what to do. They have like a lot of money, extra income, and they're like, and they have time. So they're like, why not? And then they take the drugs and then they eventually get addicted to it with constant exposure. Um, they mm -hmm. also, it's very easily to find the drugs. And then there's also peer approval into taking drugs. Those are just some factors that they found talking to their patients. A lot of, uh, a lot of patients mentioned these factors and they found out that these factors are factors that lead um, wealthy, wealth te uh, teens of wealthy families to start taking drugs. There's also parental oversight. So parents might know that their kids are drinking alcohol, they're going to parties where they're drinking alcohol, but they're, um, they're very sporty, they're doing well academically, so they just ignore that part. And they're like, okay, they're just living their life, they're being teens, and that can actually cause, um, if they have the genetic predisposition, they're more likely to get addicted to the drugs and alcohol. Because mm -hmm. parents care more about the academic excellence. So affluent adolescents, so affluent, oh, sorry, I've been talking English. I'm really sorry. Um, affluent, يعني الناس اللي عندهم مصاري أكتر, فالعائلتهم عندها مصاري أكتر, في عندهم um, درجات أعلى لا لا يشربوا alcohol لدرجة إنهم intoxicated, مش إنه بس يشربوا كاسة أو كاسبين, بس إنه يشربوا ويصيروا blacked out. و كمان they smoke weed أكتر وهذول الأولاد الأغنياء مش ال مش ال poor وكمان عندهم double يعني عمرتين ال ال average تبع ال USA كامل إنه يأخذوا stimulants زي Adderall Ritalin و cocaine mm -hmm. and then yeah that's it وهذا ما لقيت research like هذا لقيت واحد research paper وبعدين واحد um, treatment program, but كتير صعب تلاقي research أو حتى analysis. You know, بتلاقي okay إذا بتعمل على Google حتلاقي كتير papers like New York Times وما بعرف إيش. But they're not actually like scientifically studied. فما كان بيستعمل أنا هون استعمل science وبدي I need to prove إنه إنه هدول هن المشاكل ومعمول عليها research كتير وإحنا لازم نهتم بهدول ال هدول ال factors. مشان نقدر نحاول نساعد الناس اللي اللي مدمنين واللي متاثرين بالادمان. اها. اوكي. So my next question would be so we always hear about stigma to about the stigma about homeless people and how homeless areas are usually very full on drugs. So do you think that stigma is warranted? Me? Mm -hmm. No. Oh. I don't think stigma towards anything is ever warranted. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Do you think that... Like, is it, is it, like, should you treat people based on a stigma or based, create a stigma based on a reality? If something is a reality, should you treat someone badly? I wholeheartedly disagree. But do you, do you think the conclusion that homeless areas and more... Uh, and lower income areas are just naturally full of drugs. Do you think that conclusion is warranted? Uh, no, that is actually the whole reason the poor areas are full of drugs is because that is the only source of income or the easiest source of income they can find. But the, they're actually selling it to people that are rich. So it's actually the richest fault that the poor people Wait, are. Are we talking about drug dealers or homeless users? Talk We're I'm talking about the areas that have homeless people, the low income areas, the marginalized areas. And people usually think that these areas are just full of drugs, are naturally more disposed to having more drugs. Is that a reasonable conclusion? Well, it depends on what kind of perspective you're coming from. If you're coming from the perspective of where some 
someone is trying to be condescending or they're trying to label or paint a certain picture in order to achieve um, some sort of nefarious goal. I would I wouldn't comment on that, but if you're coming from the perspective of reality, yeah, I guess the re- that is the reality of the situation. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. if you're coming from a like a like a positive perspective, a perspective of, of, of change, then you I would say like yeah, there are these things, but these are the reasons why blah 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 blah. You know, and mm-hmm. yeah, that's how you address yeah, it. I'm not saying that they're not they're not more prone to having drugs. But there's a lot of factors that play into it. You can talk about the government's, the government's hand into that. You can talk about the whole reason actually rich people are buying from them. So it's actually the richest world. There's so many factors that put poor people in that, or like poor, poor areas, oh God, um, like lower, lower income areas in that position where they are where they have drugs and where they have all that troubled so it's actually not their fault in my opinion it's the whole it's society's fault and but was he asking whose fault it is was he asking whose fault what what was the question was he asking whose fault it was i'm saying it's their fault he was asking if it's true Uh that there is more drugs. So yes, there is drugs, but that doesn't mean it's in any way their fault. It's actually um, it's actually society's fault and the government government's fault. So Aki, what do you think about that? Like, who do you think is to be held responsible for the influx of drugs that would go into these poor areas? Who do you think would be held responsible for that? Mm-hmm. Do you think it's a matter of just supply and demand where there's a demand in the poor communities for these drugs, so they should stop that demand? Or do you think that we should stop the supply and the demand would just naturally follow? Uh, responsibility is a fickle thing. It's a, it's a, I don't know, man. Like I look at, again, I can't, I can't like answer those kinds of questions because it's so there's so much detail that needs to be discussed. You know, what I mean, first of all, the question is, like, people think that drug dealing is the easy way out. Mm-hmm. What's easy about risking your freedom and your life? You know what I mean? There's got to yeah. be something wrong up here, or something wrong in someone's situation for them to choose that route. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so. I guess the picture that's painted that like this is what they want, this is they should all go to jail, blah, 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 all this stuff, like that's that's not gonna work. These people are already living like they're dying. So what's mm-hmm. the problem? You know what I mean? Um uh like like I said before, like if it's not it's not with supply or demand or any of that, it's about changing people's circumstances. And, 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 and giving them opportunities, giving them other options, you know what I mean? And things will happen like both sides on the drug dealer's perspective and from those who use, right? On the drug users, like if you give them each opportunity or perspective, uh, something different than what they're used to and address the internal problems within um, and help them build themselves and their character, then you'll see, you'll see the decrease. You'll see the demand for drugs decrease and you'll see the what's it called the supply or like the the people that what's it called bring these things d- decrease you know what i mean i don't know how many drug dealers i've seen um you know either become muslim or they were muslim but came back to islam and stopped what they were doing you know what i mean so mm-hmm. uh or like whatever you know what i mean like they something in their life they they changed their life and they just they seen they seen the light you know what I mean, so to speak. It doesn't have to be religious related. Right? They just you think that want all the dealers are victims of the system that causes that problem. Victim of the system. I don't know, man. Like I just know, okay, this is how I think about it. I just know if I'm in the position, if I think like I want to help people, right? Mm-hmm. I I can't. I, I'm, I don't allow myself to ever put the blame on the people I want to help. 
You know what I mean? So, for example, let's say you want to help someone that's addicted on drugs. You know what I mean? Or help a homeless person, whatever it is. Regardless, like, where I'm talking about responsibility, there's always a reason why some someone made their choices. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They made the choices that led them to where they are. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? No one... Like, maybe the first needle someone forced in their arm, but no one forced their tenth needle. No one forced their hundredth needle. You know what I mean? That's the choice that they made. But yeah, I what, can't... What if, what if they're addicted? Back to that's genetic... The choice. Yo, genetic, yo, genetic that's the genetic choice that they made. Unless, unless, unless someone stuck a needle in your arm and forced you, which does happen, by the way. I know someone that has happened to, right? But that's the choice. But the thing is, like, I'm just using other people's logic. Like, this is their logic, right? And that's and they use that kind of logic to not help people, right? Like, oh no, they don't deserve it. You know what I mean? But if you're in the if, if you're of the mind and perspective that you're a humanitarian and you want to help people and all these things, you you have to throw that kind of thinking to the side because it won't help. Um, all you gotta think about is like, okay, what's this person's situation? What do they want? You know what I mean? Are you addicted? Do you want to stop? No. Okay. Why don't you want to stop? What's wrong? You know what I mean? Like, is it is it something in your head? Is it in your body? Is it a combination of the two, right? Is it the withdrawals? Is it your trauma? What is it? You know what I mean? Do you need, okay, let's say you stop, right? But you don't have a job. You don't have enough to do. You know, you're still at odds with your family or you don't have family. You know, you're just going to go right back to it. Did you change your circle? You know, so on and so forth. Like, there's so many, right? Mm-hmm. So many things that you got to account for. Juman, you mentioned that the government has a, a role to play in all this situation. So what do you think that role is? And do you think they handled it well? Um, there's a lot of issues with that. They talk about the government actually wanting there to be like a specific level of still drug trade because they benefit off of it and there's all like there's a lot of issues i can't say for a fact anything is 100 percent real but i can say for sure that the government can help by um providing rehab and housing facilities to the homeless and Mm -hmm. rehab for anyone without like good good rehab for anyone without being expensive because okay there might be i'm not sure honestly if there's like free rehab but i don't know if the quality is good because they'll probably just throw people in there and not have funding and all that so there's Mm -hmm. no point of going to it in the first place so yeah free to be available and um they should also provide uh like employment employment like specific like employment parts for um, people under the poverty line and specifically addicted people because it helps. It's really hard for addicts to find jobs and even ex-addicts to find jobs Mm -hmm. and um, get on their feet. If they can't get on their feet, they'll just go back to their habits. I also think that I do I do agree with you, man. And I actually thought about that for the last one and for the last thing that we did. And then I thought like the amount of tax money that would go into that and people's how people how upset people would be. Um, they are but then, already like, taking their tax money. Like, I know. I know just real like, it, like I don't know. Like I also think that this is something that may be a lot harder to do which is I think that they need to, like I was saying before with the whole help thing, right? Like they need to re, I don't know, they need to change, they need to reprogram their if, brain. Like the government needs to, like even, that are, even their- If you look at countries that are more developed and that treat uh, treat addictiveness in a better way than North America, specifically Canada and the US, the way we're dealing with addiction is very bad. It's very crappy. And if you look at other countries, specifically European countries, such as Sweden, Switzerland, and Portugal, you can see that they, they the way they approached it is so much better. And their addiction rates are basically like not fair. They don't have the war on drugs that we have because and, they treat it differently. No. And that's exactly what I was going to say. I was going to say our approach here, we're very military. 
style. Mm -hmm. Like even like the way that the police are trained, the way that every the way that they handle situations, it's like it's almost like you're just you're continuing to perpetuate the same system. Like you're not you're not changing anything. Like so I really think so for example with that tax money stuff, if you could repurpose the police, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. and and use that money to um it's it's the whole thing that's happening in America right now with defund the police. Um, but like it's more like reallocating those resources to different things like community programs, mm -hmm. um, things that'll help people get jobs, things that'll help people um better their life, you know what I mean? Which in turn, which will come right back, you know, to the to the community, to the city, to the country, right? Like if those people better their lives, that means they're working, that means they're participating in the economy, that means they could be given back, you know what I mean, so on and so forth, they're paying their taxes. So it like it helps everybody, right? Um, so I think like the whole government approach needs to change instead of having like some sort of, like you mentioned before last time, I think like some sort of like, like a bandaid fix, you know, just the immediate short term thing. Like, oh no, here's this, try this. You know what I mean? Instead, like maybe think of it more like long term, like restructuring the whole system. Um, and hopefully, you know, hopefully things will actually, will actually see some change. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um Juman mentioned a very important point that i really like uh which was about portugal and they have seen massive success in their drug well anti-drug campaign what they did was that they legalized well decriminalized all drugs so you can't go buy it but if you were caught with it you wouldn't be for example jailed you wouldn't be tried in a criminal court you'd have to pay a fine though so and Canada recently, well, not recently, like two years ago, legalized um, weed. So what do you think, is that a step in the in the right direction? Is that a step backwards? Or what do you think about that? I am pro-weed legalization because mm -hmm. before people were doing it in secret, it was affecting, because they're doing it in secret, they're smoking, they... I don't know, it had more of a negative impact on people that don't smoke. I did see, and people were worried about like, oh, when it becomes legal, more people are going to smoke, which was true for the first month that it got legal. I saw a lot of people that never smoked before try it and they smoked, but then they did that like one time or two times and then they stopped because smoking weed isn't their thing. So they mm -hmm. never actually like, like yes, oh wait, sorry. Like yeah, the kind of like we best but then no what of bad no what of sura oh it's shahir tearing a tick tear in a sura buha with a kanu bas could have a what up. Oh bad is shahir had a rejoin the numbers rejo and that's the can I'm bidakno abel illegally or mazadu dachnu legally that's Naza that the letter bomb did what he can like, oh, had a middle legal, so high slated Kuli the Khan, high slated fee, Mashakel, or as I heck, Maenno is a shift to graph in the Hatleta Bilbidae, ill weed specifically, ill addiction rate to Baha in general population, it did a element alcohol. Alcohol, or caffeine, or hatta gambling. And alcohol is legal. Or alcohol has more negative effects than weed. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know. I, I I think I think it all it all depends on the results. So we'll see. Like so, if usage decreased and things decreased. Then like that's what the results say, right? Mm -hmm. As for as for my opinion, I I, I don't believe. Um, so decriminalizing is a good thing, right? That's a great thing. But I don't believe providing access to people will, will help. Um, but like I said, we'll see We'll see what the results say. What access, they they're controlling but, the weed. Like you actually know that the weed is clean. People, it's no longer people, laced with fentanyl and other, and other bad drugs. Right. And the government, people, and the government is making buy, a profit. Bro, people don't even buy from the dispensaries. People don't even buy it. Like they go, they go when they have to. But they don't like buying from the dispensaries. That's the people you know. Everyone I know, they would rather buy from the yes. government dispensaries because they know for sure it's like cleaner and whatever. And this way, command like the government, I'm profit. 
if we but then go Google we right like, now. Go Google. Go Google. Search the Canadian weed community, right? And and go see what they say. So I don't care about the. I'm telling you, you're talking I, so what about. I'm saying is I don't know who you're talking about, but we've all got different associations with people. What I'm trying to say is, is that, anyways, whatever. Regardless, so like, I think, I don't know. So there is that benefit where, like, there is that safety net where people feel like getting it from a government regulated place is, uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's safer. It's, you know what I mean? So, but. I still don't think that it's good because like I said, it provides access because if, if it was still, if it was still on the streets, you know what I mean? Which hopefully that they remove that too. Right. So it you would think be they, harder for people to get it. Like you have to know someone that knows someone that knows someone to get it. You know what I mean? Whereas mm -hmm. now as soon as you turn 18 or 19 or whatever the age is, you could just go or you don't even have to turn 18, 19. You just have to know someone at that age. You know what I mean? And they could just go and get it for you. Like, it's very easy, quick to access. So mm -hmm. I don't think increasing the access will help at all. Getting, no, get, but getting drugs in the first place, illegal drugs, is not hard at all. It's much, it's much harder than, what's it called, than, uh, than going to the dispensary right around your house. So you think that... Well, but weed is uh, alcohol is legal. I don't see in any way yeah. why weed is more harmful than alcohol. No, no, no. Alcohol is by far way more harmful than weed. One hundred percent. Both of them. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but both of them maybe shouldn't be legal. You know what I mean? But yo, you can't. You, it's built in their culture and in their society. There's no way you're gonna change that. But they're both. They're both harmful. Alcohol being supreme more. So I'll give both of you a last minute to say your thoughts on the matter, anything you'd like to add to the conversation, maybe something you'd like to see come out of the government, out of the local communities. So uh, Aki, I'll start with you. Um, I just, speaking to our community, you know, like the auto community and the Canadian auto community, like I just hope that, um, we could kind of change our perspective in the sense of you see a view where like the, your choices are your choices. And then with that reasoning, they don't help anyone. And then the other thing is, is like actually pay attention to your children and, and, and don't enforce things on them. Try to like listen to them and, and, and see what they're saying. You know what I mean? Um, try to, try to, I don't know. Like, I don't, I wouldn't say be their friend, but like a little, like be their friend. You know what I mean? So you could, so even if they do something, they'll be comfortable enough to tell you. And then within that, it'll still be in your control. Right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say don't judge people. Mm -hmm. And like, especially like, is it truth had a, had like, whether Muslim is Muslim, I'll smoke sweet, I'll have to bishop alcohol. Doesn't matter if you believe it or, like if you you're against it, you shouldn't judge people and the actions of the Akaduha. Is the interdict any bad word that I'm in now? Okay, not that I'm in now. But don't think any less of them. Laha Sabab, poor people and poverty and people of less socioeconomic statuses, command Shilum and Mokom in law. You can be like, oh, but that's more poor. You judge them I don't know. I don't know صراحة ليه بس شوفت إنه judgment هون لل poor people أكتر من ببلادنا which is very stupid ما بعرف إيش بس كمان that has to be stopped. Okay, شكرا لكل اثنين. Thank you both for being here. It's been a pleasure. Wait, Baha, you didn't say your opinion. I don't have an opinion. I'm hosting. I know he's been quiet this whole time. <laughs> I'm hosting. I don't have an opinion here. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you both for joining us.
I enjoyed this even though maybe it didn't seem like it, but it was very nice. And thank you, especially to Roman for making that presentation. Thank you for Aki for joining us again. And you, I'll see you again sometime in another, probably more lighthearted episode. Thank you. Shukran a'azai al-mushahideen wa antamanna an naraakum maratan ukhra fi liqa'in jadeed.